everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Gabriella Laster, and I'm joined today by my colleague Daniela, and we're going to be talking about what Elementor has been doing with Elementor AI. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Daniela, and I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about all the Elementor AI features, which I think are a true game changer for web creation and specifically for our Elementor users. Mm -hmm. Over the past, I want to say close to a year now, AI has been gaining popularity in all different topics, um, and web creators as well have been finding ways to use AI and implement it as part of their workflow when they're building websites. And Elementor, the leading website builder for WordPress, has identified this, these, this opportunity very early on and was actually the first website builder to natively integrate AI as part of the editor itself. Yes, uh, absolutely. So Elementor AI has a set of tools of AI tailored specifically to Elementor because it's within the editor and allows you to, to all the web creators to generate text and code such as HTML and CSS, JavaScripts, mm -hmm. and truly generate images within their editor directly to create their website. And I think that's one of the biggest advantages of having it directly implemented with an Elementor. So instead of having to go to different windows and having to look at different tools and looking for different things, and sometimes you know how when you're looking at different tabs, you kind of get distracted, you get lost, that really interrupts your workflow. All of a sudden you're looking at a different task you're working on. Maybe you're looking at the vacation you're trying to plan. So having it directly within the editor itself means that you don't have to distract yourself. You can stay focused on building your website and adding the content you want to within the editor itself. Yeah, precisely. So not only that, because it's within the editor, then it provides you a contextual suggestion for text, code, and images. So if you're in a specific element and you write a code, it will provide you the, the correct uh, selectors. And if you're uh, adding an image or a text, if it's a headline, it will provide you the suggestions for a headline and not just general text. Mm -hmm. So that's also time saving. So should we get started with some of the images examples and see what we can do there? Yeah, sure. This is why we are here today. So let me uh, uh, show you something very uh, cool. I took uh, an Elementor kit for a travel blog and let's try and uh, start and play with it. What I will show you here is I'm scrolling here and I don't like this image uh, of the kit. So I want to change it to regenerate it. I don't want to edit it. I want to uh, start over. So I'll just go and start writing uh, the prompt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that we have the Eiffel Tower here. So I'll use the Eiffel Tower and we'll just write uh, the Eiffel Tower from uh, Mountains View, for example. I don't really know how to write the, the perfect prompt mm -hmm. and we have a tool here that will make it easier. And I think before we continue, I think this is a great example of how Elementor is making it easier for web creators who don't necessarily know how to use AI. You can use the enhance the prompt and it makes your prompts better. We know we have to give a lot of context to get the right prompt. And with the enhancer, you're kind of learning how to do that as you go. Yes, of course, and it, it will provide you better results. So I'll set this for a landscape and choose the ratio uh, 16 over 9, which is something very basic. And let's start, uh, just press here, generate image. And there you have it, four beautiful examples uh, of what I wanted. Now I'm only uh, the only thing left to do is to choose which one you mm -hmm. want. Uh, before that, uh, I want to edit it because it is on the main page and I want to increase the resolution so it will be uh, the sharpest uh, uh, possible. Uh, it will cost a bit from uh, the performance of the website, but it's the, the homepage and mm -hmm. a lot of visitors come from that and continue to, to the blog, so it's important for me. And the AI resize, just do it for you and there you have it. And, and that's a really nice amazing. resolution, yeah. Yes. So I noticed that there were also editing options available. So what happens if you have an image you kind of like, but it's not exactly there yet? Is there anything we can do with that? Yeah, sure. We have the variations editing options. So let me just uh, show you how it's done. Uh, so I'm scrolling through my website and as I mentioned, I'm using a kit. So I want to change the images there. It's not to my liking. For example, this one is a bit cloudy. Uh, I want to spark this uh, to life. So I'll press here 
uh, the edit with AI and then let's choose the variations editing options and now let's write for example uh, sunset golden hour uh, I'll enhance the prompt mm -hmm. as we did previously and I'll just tweak it a bit because I do want to to add the Eiffel Tower there I truly like Paris I don't know why <laughs> uh, so I'll add to the enhanced uh, prompt uh, the request for an a Eiffel Tower and then just uh, mark the the reference image if i want it to be as close to the reference image or closer to the prompt i created uh, so i'm setting it closer to uh, the prompt and let's wait for a second and there you have it i think four beautiful uh, mm -hmm. variations uh, just choose one that to your liking and you can either edit it continue editing it or use the image and what you mentioned before about the prompt versus the reference image uh, range that we have here, yeah. what that's going to do is it's essentially the closer you are to the prompt, the more different the new images are going to be created. Whereas if you're closer to the reference image, you're going to have variations that are closer to the original image you provided to the AI tool. Exactly. And there were also additional editing tools in there that I saw. I thought I saw we had something about expand, expanding an image. Yeah, of course. Not always you got the image that you want or that fits correctly to where you want it. So let's uh, use the expansion tool. I like this one. Um, let's take the, the main image that we have here. I don't like that it's uh, cutting them in the middle. So I'll just uh, press expand and then I can uh, decide where the expansion needs to start from. I'll start from here and I'm not even writing a, a prompt because I just wanted to expand the existing image. I'll just enter uh, generate and voila, you see, I have mm -hmm. uh, the expanded view. It completed their full body and I like this image, so I'll use this one. And what about, I also saw that we had a generated fill in there. Can you show us that option as well? Uh, yeah, of course. I like this uh, tool very much. It's very cool. Let me show you. I'll, I'll choose another image just so uh, to be uh, uh, more creative. Uh, so let's go to uh, this one where the children are looking at the lake. And let's add a backpack to this uh, children's uh, uh, back. So I'll just press the image and choose the generative fill. And now I'll mark the area where I want the backpack to be. So let's do a square here and right mm -hmm. and just uh, generate the image. And here you go. Just choose what backpack you think is uh, mm -hmm. more. That's incredible. Yeah, really, truly is. So the editing features don't end there. We have more editing features. We have the ability to remove and replace a background. So should we start with the removing a background feature? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, as you know, you sometimes have a product uh, uh, image or uh, you use an uh, outside uh, system just to remove the background because it doesn't fit the rest of the website so uh, no more uh, you can do it within elementary editor itself so let's uh, for example uh, choose the main image okay i don't really like that van it's cool but uh, we can play around with it so to remove background just go to remove background press and there you have it just remove you can use it uh, i'll edit it because i want to show you the replaced background mm -hmm. and uh, change uh, to I don't know, some green scenery. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if we can do that. I just write. Okay, I'll enhance the prompt. Uh, I like the enhancer too. Mm -hmm. uh, it usually generates uh, cool uh, um, outcomes, so I'm using it. And there you have it. We're having a green scenery in their house. Which is also great if, for example, I have images on my website and I know I can't find the right one so I'm looking through all my photos and I have a similar image to what I want to put on my website but I can't find the exact one I can just use AI to manipulate the image and create the image that I like yeah which course. is incredible yeah and it's also truly time-saving because you have uh, websites where you have 
stocks of images to go through. And here you just need to think whatever comes to mind, you can put it uh, there and it's just generating it without you needing to tweak all these mm -hmm. things. So. And the possibilities are really endless. I think we were playing with it before and you showed me how you can send them to outer space. Yeah, I don't know fun. Why, <laughs> why you would do that, but you can. Yeah, you so can. Really, you're not limited with the creativity options. Yes. Um, so I think we saw most of what you can do with images now. Um, Actually, we saw all the features you can do with images, but there are many millions of different ways you can use it. So should we move on to the text options? Yes, of course, because also there we have some incredible uh, abilities of editing. Um, let's have fun with it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I will take main H1. You see it says uh, welcome mm -hmm. here. And because it's travel blog, I'm not limiting it to a specific country. So we're making this multilingual. Yeah, exactly. And uh, let's just uh, remove the headline now and add the animated headline widget. Mm -hmm. OK. And I'll, I'll do it with a flip. And I'll just write welcome here in the mm -hmm. rotating text uh, section and use the AI editor. And now just with the drop down, I can translate it to whatever language I want. I chose French. Uh, you can also write welcome in whatever language mm -hmm. you want. You're not, you're not limited to these 25 uh, languages. Mm -hmm. um, let's uh, stay uh, true to where we are and translate it also to Hebrew. And last one, as you see, I'm added, adding it to the routing text uh, mm -hmm. every time and just one after the other. And let's use also Thai. I don't know Thai, if you, if you know it. No. I'm, I'm sure it's uh, accurate. So I'll choose that one. And there you have it. You have welcome in multi-languages in a travel blog. So That looks about right. Yeah. So beyond text, one of the strongest or a great capability you can use it for is for code. So those of you who know how to write custom CSS are going to have a much faster workflow to start with, or not just custom CSS, HTML, JavaScript. Um, but I'll hand it over to you to show you a little bit about what we can do. So I can use also our uh, prompt library mm -hmm. and Elementor, we created that. So let's go there and I'll just choose code and let's check one of the possibilities here. Uh, it will continue to grow and be a, a lot more uh, uh, options there. The prompt library. Yeah, the prompt mm -hmm. library. And then you can, let's just choose this one with the uh, mask. Okay, I think mm -hmm. it can be fun. And I'll just copy the prompt. And now let's go to our website. And I'll choose it uh, to do that on the main image. Uh, so let's add it with AI. And now let's go to the advanced uh, options and add it with AI in the custom CSS. I'll paste the prompt mm -hmm. and it will generate me a code. And now I'll just insert the code and uh, let's see what it did. And it's e uh, fun and easy and I don't know how to write a code so that helped me out. This is a really important point that you don't necessarily know how to code. You can use the prompt library to generate some prompts, but if you if you don't know how to code, I guess you will almost be limited by the options you know are available or you know how to ask for from AI. But if you are, if you do know how to code, if you do know how to, if you're familiar with CSS, HTML, JavaScript, any of those, you know what to ask for. So you can take this a lot farther and this is just gonna be an amazing tool to accelerate your workflow and make things a lot faster as you work. Exactly, like we are using the enhance uh, tool. Mm -hmm. So for people who know how to code, this is an enhancer mm -hmm. uh, because they don't need to go and check for snippets and just they know what they need and they can tweak the code within side and just save a lot of uh, time using the, the code generator without writing the code itself. So yeah, that's So amazing. that's all been really cool. There's a lot you can do with Elementor AI. The possibilities are really endless and we're seeing examples of people who are sharing with us the, the prompts they're coming up with and the results they're coming up with and it, it's beyond even our greatest imaginations. Yeah. Um, but can you share with us a little bit about what's coming next? Of course, because the future is right here. And you know, uh, Elementor was the pioneering in drag and drop live editor. So now with the new technology, we want to lead that as well and bring 
AI to web creation and it will be a different experience and way of creating websites. And we are thrilled to see that the options are limitless and we are planning to take them on um, both ends and bring that to our web creators. So something to look forward to for sure. Thank you, Daniela, for joining us today and showing us all these exciting features that we have with Elementor AI and all the upcoming features coming ahead. Uh, thank you for watching with us and we hope you are as excited as we are to see these new exciting developments. Absolutely. Thank you all.